Okay, so when you first open it, the first thing it's going to do is it's going to pop up and ask you about your firewall. And it's really important that you don't just hit cancel. You need to make sure you give it access. If you hit cancel, you're going to have to go back into your firewall and fix it. So um, if you are going to be working a lot on your homework in public places like airports, coffee shops, things like that, even though this says don't, it's not recommended, go ahead and click it if you want to make sure that you don't have any problems um, accessing certain features inside of brackets. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and select both of these. If you don't want to select the second one, just know that if you have problems in um, public places on public Wi-Fi's, then you might have to go and modify your firewall. Um, so anyway, I'm going to click on Allow Access. Okay, and then it, and it brings me into this uh, basic uh, beginning start page, and uh, it also gives me this information about Brackets Health Report. I'm just going to dismiss that. Um, and this is what you're going to see the first time you open it up, at least as of the version that I am currently running. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the way that this interface is. All right, so um, first off on the left side, or excuse me, on the right side, um, you'll see a few icons. Uh, I'm gonna talk about each one of them, but if you uh, hover over it, you'll see that this little lightning bolt looks, uh, looks like a lightning bolt. It says live preview. Um, I'll show you what that is in just a second. Uh, then there's also an extension manager, which I'll talk about later. And then extract for brackets is something that um, if you chose the um, installation that included extract, it'll show up here. If you did not choose the installation that included extract for uh, the Adobe uh, PSD files, then you won't see it here. So first thing I would like to show you is that, you know, as I mentioned, it opens up with this, this basic set of files. Um, and this is something that just comes with the standard installation. And you'll notice that we have on the left, we have two things. We have a set of where it says working files. And then under here we have something that says getting started. And then if I hover over, or if I click on it, you see that uh, it gives me an option to open a folder. Let me explain a little bit about what these two sections are. The top section is gonna show anything that I've actively started to edit. Um, and the bottom where it says getting started, this is the name of a folder it's the name of a project, and if I hover over it, you see that it pops up with the file pathway. And because I'm on a Windows um, machine right now, it's showing me that it's located in the C drive and program files, x86, brackets, samples, root, and then getting started. And so uh, what that is, is it, it's basically a folder that has a set of files inside of it, and it refers to this as a project. And if I twirl down this little uh, drop drop down arrow, you can see that where screenshots is, screenshots would be a folder inside of the getting started folder. And then I would have uh, an image inside of that called quickedit.png. And then uh, also inside of the getting started folder is an index file and a main.css file. You're not gonna really understand what all these different files are yet, but I just wanna show you that this is where the project folder shows up so you can manage what project you're currently working in. And then where working files shows up is basically anything that you're currently able to edit. So uh, if I were to double click main.css, you see it, it adds it up here to the working files. Also, it updated it in the editor window over on the right. Okay, so I could actually start making modifications to that if I wanted. I can also click back over here to index.html. All right, and now I want you to notice that any time that something is in working files and I'm currently in that view by selecting it, it means that I could actually go here and I could start editing. I could like, for instance, change the title of the document to getting started with brackets um, and then just add some X's or something like that, right? And I could make modifications. Now, down here under the getting started project folder, Something that I could also do if I had a lot of other files, I could also just take a quick look at it. So if I click on this uh, image file, it shows me a preview of it in the editor view, and it also gives me more information about it. Uh, it's telling me that it's uh, 2880 pixels wide by 1756 tall, 
and that it's a 251 kilobyte file and it also shows me the actual pathway to where that is located. This is going to be really helpful to you um, in helping you figure out you know, pathways to files so that if you ever get confused about the type of pathways that you need to type, you can always look here and I'll remind you of that later. And then if I could click on uh, index again. Index is both uh, showing it to me here, but also because it's open and working files, I could actually edit that if I wanted. Uh, main CSS, same thing. And if I want to take something out of the main editing window, I can always just uh, click on it up here, uh, click on the X in the working files, and then it's no longer something that I'm editing, right? Uh, but if I did start to edit, it would add it to working files. All right, just so you understand, working files are just the things that you currently have that are open for editing. Okay, now while I am in index, I'm gonna click on index. And if I hit this little live preview button, all right, it's gonna give me this uh, notice just one time. All right, I'm not gonna see it again. And basically what it's telling me that it's doing is that it's going to show you HTML and CSS changes live without actually having to save the file, but anytime you wanted to update JavaScript files, for instance, or later if you get involved in doing this uh, in the future, like PHP files, any kind of dynamic scripting files, then uh, you would actually have to save them in order to see them updated. But for HTML and CSS, the good news is that you can actually make changes live and it'll uh, immediately update. So I'll click on OK. and and you see that it's showing me right here in this icon that it's loading it. Okay, and then it's basically what it does is it loads this little, uh, up here, if, if you're wondering what this address is, it's like a mini um, web server that is running. And the other thing I want you to notice too in this little mini web server is that it shows my file name after a forward slash. Okay, so that's the thing that it's, that it's using right now, that it's loading that index file that I wanted to quick preview. The other thing that is important is that down here, you see that before I had currently had a version of Chrome open, right? That is my Chrome version right there that I had open before whenever I downloaded the files. Well, the thing is, this is a different, uh, a different version, I should say. It's a different instance of Chrome that's running. And this is uh, something I don't want you to get confused about. Anytime you use Live Preview with brackets, it's going to open up its own version of Chrome that is separate from your installation. Okay, and you'll notice see here it says, it has the actual title of the page, getting started with brackets XXX. I never actually saved that index page where it says XXXX. It's showing me unsaved changes, but it's showing them to me live. And just so that you can understand kind of what's going on is that if I were to go down here where it says h1 and we'll talk about this later when we get into how to structure your HTML but where it says getting started with brackets you see how it's highlighted over here in the the left side in my live view it shows me highlights whenever I click on things right all right if I click on this paragraph it shows me where the paragraph is which is really wonderful because then you can immediately immediately see the different things that you are currently working on over in your live view. And if I were to change this where it says getting started with brackets, I could also change it uh, as a test. And you can see that it's actually doing a live update as I type. And I didn't even save anything. Okay. And that's really, really helpful. Okay. So that's a basic introduction of how that works. And then the other thing I want you to notice too is that we have line numbers here on the left. Um, and that's also gonna be like in your CSS or any JavaScript pages. Um, and then down, uh, down here, you've got, it tells you that it's reading it as an HTML file, which uh, usually it can tell what a file is, but one of the ways that it tells that it's an HTML file is by the doc type and this HTML declaration. If you just had some snippets of HTML for some reason that you're opening up, like maybe just in a paragraph tag or something like that, it might not recognize it as HTML. And that means that it also wouldn't do default code hinting and things like that um, and, and the right color coding as well. So in that case, you would actually want to make sure that you select the right document type. Um, but that's a good indicator that if you open something up 
that you think is HTML and it doesn't look right, it doesn't have the color coding or code hinting or anything, then maybe you've forgotten something really important, for instance, like the doc type or the HTML declaration, which we'll get into again, as I said, later. I also want to show you uh, really quickly some of the things that you can do with the view menu item. And you'll notice that there are some things that by default are turned on. And I'm going to suggest that you leave those on. For instance, line numbers, word wrap, uh, live preview highlight, which we just discussed. You know, when you select something, it shows up over here. Um, lint files on save. I'll explain that later. Just leave it turned on. It's about error checking. Um, and uh, quick view on hover. This is something that I'm going to show you really quickly um, that you can turn on or off depending on how annoying it, you find it. But uh, there's also um, there's this active highlight active uh, line. And what that allows you to do, if I check that, is that whenever I have something selected, you see how it sort of turns gray. And it highlights it for me so that I can easily and quickly find where my cursor is in the document. So I would recommend that you turn that on. It's not on by default. Uh, but anyway, let's talk about this quick view on hover thing. If I go into my main CSS and like I start hovering over colors, for instance, and uh, you can tell what a color is in the CSS. Uh, and we'll talk about this obviously more later, but you'll see something maybe that has a hashtag followed by six, a combination of either six numbers and letters or three numbers uh, or three letters. Um, and so this is going to be an example like of a dark gray if I hover that. This is an example of uh, a white. All Fs is white. And then this would be a light gray up here. This is a sort of a darker gray or almost black, close to black down there. Um, okay, so and then if I wanted to go back to this HTML file, for instance, and I wanted to scroll down and find an IMG tag, let's see, it's right here. It's on line 82 right here. And you see that if I select the tag right right now, it highlighted it over here in the quick view and in the preview. But if I were to just hover over it right now, depending on where you hover, if I just hover over the IMG tag or, you know, where it says a screenshot showing CSS quick edit, it doesn't do anything. But as soon as I hover over where it says source equals and then I hover over the pathway to the actual PNG file, it'll show me a picture of the PNG file. And so that's kind of handy, I think. And that's the thing that I was referring to that's up here under view that is the quick view on hover. If you find that you've got a lot of picture files or a lot of colors or something, and they're getting in the way of looking at your code, you can disable this really easily right here and then always turn it back on later. Um, something else too is that you can increase your font size. Anytime you look at like this view panel or any any panel up here in the menu, you're going to see that a lot of these things often to the right side are going to have um, shortcuts, keyboard shortcuts. And so if you like to use keyboard sh shortcuts, then I would recommend that you get used to using these. Control zero on Windows or command on a Mac zero is going to restore the font size back to its default. Um, if you want to increase the font size, it's control plus plus. You just add pluses uh, or command plus. Um, and then to subtract it, right, you would do uh, control and then the minus key. That little plus in, in between is saying add control to the minus key. All right, so let's do an example here. So if I wanted to increase the size, I would do control Windows or command Mac and then the plus. And you see it gets bigger and bigger. If I want to decrease the size, it gets smaller. Um, and you can decide on what you like the best. And I might have mine bigger than you typically would normally want yours. But um, this way, you know, you can see it in the video better. But if you want to make it smaller because you have good eyesight, then you can make it smaller by doing a control or command minus. Lastly, the other thing I wanted to show you really quickly is how you can do a split screen. So if I click on this little button right here, uh, I can choose a vertical split. That's the most common type. And so if I did a vertical split, I could add my uh, index file on the left and my CSS on the right. So it says up here, open a file while this pane has focus. So that means while you've got that selected, you could go over here and double click the main and then uh, .css. And then now you can see uh, that you've got both your CSS and your HTML open at the same time. And that'll do it for our basic introduction uh, to brackets.